It is now known. Jesus is crucified on the cross. He is in great pain and suffering. He looks down and sees his persecutors. He then speaks his first word. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Luke chapter 23, verse 34. During the Friday of Lent, we had our observance of the Stations of the Cross. And in the particular version that we use, the very first station had the following words. Jesus is standing before angry people who are yelling and saying mean, hurtful things to him. They scream at him. Some of them tell lies about him. But Jesus stays quiet, even though he knows that he will be hurt. He knows that God is with him. He even asks God to help him forgive the people who are yelling and telling lies about him. Beloved, we live in a culture that celebrates the mouth. We celebrate the mouth in such a way that too many of us do not think before we speak. We do not take time to ponder what effect will my words have. Because even if something is said that causes hurt or pain and hopefully is forgiven, it is hard to forget who said what. In other words, we live in a culture that loves the gospel that celebrates lies, that loves to somehow speak ill of other people. It's a sign of the speaker's brokenness. It's a sign that something needs to be fixed within so that what comes out can be something beautiful. But when the mouth engages, from a position of hurt or pain, not caused by the people or person being spoken of, but because of hurt and pain carried through life, then the only gifts that can be given are words that hurt and cause pain. I do not know of one single person in my life who had never been lied on. I myself have been the victim of many lies, too numerous to recall. And there are many times when I am amazed at two things when these things surface. One is the incredible ease at which church people speak lies. Even though we say we follow Jesus who declared himself, I am the truth. And if there's anything that is even more startling than just the lies being circulated, it is who said it. You would think this person or these people know better. And so every time you see the person's face and you know the lies that were spoken of, it sends you to the cross. It certainly sends me to the cross because I cannot believe the intentional hurt you are causing to me or others when you lie. As a priest, I am challenged. I am challenged even in my weakness to follow what I preach. And today, I share with you the first word. Jesus looks on the people who told lies about him, who sent him to the cross, and what does he say? God, Daddy, get them. No. Daddy, forgive them. They are weak. They are broken. They are immature. They haven't yet learned how to love. So, Daddy, forgive them, for they know not what they do. One of the most beautiful privileges I have as a priest that lay people will not know is that after consecrating 
ordinary bread and wine to become the body of the Christ through the movement of the Holy Spirit is when I can lift up that body and say to people who come forward, the body of Christ. The same body lifted high on the cross is the same body being presented to each individual who comes. But there's a certain beauty and power in that. Because, beloved, whenever I see the face of the people who lie, or people who cause hurt and pain, in that moment of saying, Behold, the body of Christ, I also say in my mind and my heart, Father, forgive her. Forgive him. Forgive them. And when I do that, beloved, I experience a freedom that comes from freely forgiving. It's not easy to forgive. And as a people who are broken, we sometimes huddle and hug the hurt and the pain rather than let it go. But as followers of Jesus, whose very first word on the cross is, Father, forgive them, we who follow him must also have the courage to say and do the same. It doesn't mean the individual or the people will change. It means that you, I, we, when we choose to forgive, we are free in Jesus Christ. And a people who are free can celebrate life as God has directed. And so whenever I pray from my own point of pain and suffering, Father, forgive them, I find real peace. And I become like Jesus on the cross who look on the faces of my accusers. And even though the pain will come because of the lies spoken and the gossip circulated, the truth is, when I align my voice with the voice of Jesus, Father, forgive them. That is when I find victory in Christ Jesus. To him, beloved, be glory and praise forever and ever. Amen. Yeah.